Hello, hi, I'm Stan Nietzsche. I'm a cardiologist practicing at Mount Elizabeth Hospital. My subspecialty is in interventional cardiology. So I have interest especially in patients who present with complex coronary artery disease, acute coronary syndromes, and myocardial infarction, or commonly known as heart attacks. We can broadly divide treatment into three main categories. First of all, all patients will need good medical treatment. By medical treatment, I mean you want medication to control your blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, all this to prevent the future risk of heart attack. Now, you also want medication that will improve or relieve the symptoms that are associated with coronary artery disease. If medication can control the symptoms, sometimes that may be all that's necessary. However, for patients with more severe disease, in other words, the blockages are more advanced, then they may need to undergo more definitive uh, therapy. There are two kinds. One, either we can do insert stents, or two, we can go for open heart surgery. During the angiogram procedure, we usually use a tube, either inserted through the wrist or through the leg artery, that will pass all the way to the heart. Now, angioplasty is the same procedure where through this tube, we pass a small wire and balloon and equipment all the way to the heart to unblock the artery. Firstly, if we have a blocked artery in the heart, you can see these deposits here where it chokes up the blood vessel and blood can flow through. And these patients may have symptoms of angina, chest discomfort, or even heart attack. Now, we just pass a very long tube all the way from, let's say, the hand artery, pass a wire across the blockage, and thereafter we can put a stent, which is like a small metal mesh, right across the blockage. We inflate it, unblock the artery, widen it, so thereafter you can see a stent that is deployed in the artery. When this is done, we remove all the other wires and catheter, and we leave the stent behind, and we end up with artery with a stent with a wide and patent artery. And hopefully this will relieve our patient's symptoms and restore them to health. When patients have coronary artery disease, they can affect in many positions, locations, and in different severity. Let's say if a patient has one or two blockages in discrete places, putting stents may be adequate to relieve the symptoms, hopefully in a way that causes least trauma. However, if a patient has poor heart function, if they are diabetic, or the blockages affect maybe all the blood vessels, all three blood vessels in multiple areas, then perhaps going, undergoing bypass surgery may be better for the long-term uh, care for the patient. For angioplasty, the wound or injury to a patient is just a small cut, either at the wrist or the groin. Conversely, for open heart surgery, it will be a, what we call stenotomy, where you have to, a scar across the chest bone, it will have to expose the heart. The risk for angioplasty generally is lower, varies from 1% to 3% risk of heart attack, stroke, or death during the procedure, so it's relatively lower risk. However, putting a stand may have a, a future risk of re-narrowing either in the same place or in other arteries. A bypass surgery is a more extensive surgery now, so the risk of surgery obviously will be much higher at that point in time. But if the surgery is successful, the chance of a, a long-term re-narrowing or re-blockage will be usually lower than angioplasty. After any angioplasty procedure, the most important thing is to make sure you take the medication that your doctor has prescribed so that there won't be risk of recurrence. Pay special attention to your blood pressure, cholesterol, as well as diabetic control because these are all significant risk factors for re-narrowing. In terms of exercise, after the initial one or two weeks uh, uh, resting phase, I would certainly encourage most patients, if they can, proceed with regular exercise at least three to five times a week, 35, 30 minutes each time. Exercise will include brisk walking, jogging, swimming, or whatever physical activities they enjoy. If anyone has any symptoms, by symptoms we mean chest discomfort, unexplained breathlessness, 
don't discount it because sometimes this may be signs of underlying heart disease and if we leave it unattended, it may lead to devastating consequences. So if in doubt, I always suggest that patients do approach a doctor, have a discussion, explore what are the potential risks to your own health and then get it checked out.